unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Put those hands together and give God a great praise because he's worthy to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Come on, say it with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Truly, we are grateful to be in the house one more time. This is New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church located 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana, where our pastor is Reverend Edward C. Turner. Let's show him some love. We are so grateful that you've decided to come in and join us. If we have any first time visitors, can you just wave your hand? We are so grateful and thankful that you've tuned in by way of Facebook Live, if you've tuned in by way of YouTube. If you're watching by way of Facebook Live, if you can like, heart, share, and comment. If you can do us a favor, like, heart, share, and comment. If you're watching by way of YouTube, if you can subscribe and comment. This is the second Sunday, and we acknowledge and we let our youth lead us in worship. Let's show our youth some love. They will lead us in our worship today with scripture, prayer, and song. This is now our call to worship. As we are called into worship today, we remember that when God appeared on earth in the person of Jesus, most of the world did not recognize him and therefore did not worship him. Today we ask for faith that will open our eyes to see Jesus for who he is, that we might worship him in truth. People of God, behold and see your God. We open our eyes to see his glory. We open our ears to hear his wisdom. We open our hands to offer him gifts. We open our mouths to sing his praise. We open our hearts to offer him our love. He is Lord. Let the church say amen. Our youth will come now and provide us with the scripture and prayer following that. We will have praise and worship in Jesus name. morning church uh, today's scripture I will be reading John 3 and 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life Everyone, let's bow our heads, please. God, thank you for us to be here. Thank you for protecting everyone and touch our hearts to protect anyone who's going through anything and or disease. And thank you for everything. So we pray and worship you and glory and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, 
worship flows to you. Let my worship flow to you. Let my worship flow to you. Let my worship flow to you. Flow to you. Let my worship flow to you. 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 It's prayer time at the household of faith. If you're sitting next to your children or just, we want to pray for these children, these families, those who have fought in wars for our safety. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Right now, we thank you for another Sunday. Thank you for another day that we've never seen before. Have mercy, Lord, on those in foreign countries. Have mercy, Lord, on every church, every pastor, every church leader, our city officials. We pray, God, for the furtherance of this service, that the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, go forth, that somebody will leave here different than they came. Maybe they came with a heaviness of heart, spirit of depression, pain in the body, worried about how they're going to come out with the court case. Worried about what the doctor going to say. But I recommend a Dr. Jesus. A lawyer in a court room. Doctor in a sick room. Doctor who have never lost a case. Suicidal spirits. Manic depression. Somebody's going through today. But by the grace and the mercy of God, we pray that they'll come out all right in the name of Jesus. We pray for the choir, that the song will get in the singer, that we all will be lifted as we lift up the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Bless now. For those who don't have enough food, don't know how they're going to pay their bills. You're way out of no way. And it had not been from the grace of God, where would we be? But by your mercy, your grace, Lord, we give you for honor and praise in the name of Jesus. Bless now that this service be unto your glory unto your honor and unto your praise in the name of jesus can you say thank you lord for his mercy thank you lord for his goodness can you stand to your feet and give god a praise i don't care who you are stand up and give god a hallelujah praise thank you jesus glory to god here in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Way out of the way. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. This is the account of the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man said, Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye, loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him. And he said upon him, And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches up off the trees, and straw them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father, David, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Oh. Uh-huh.
How many of you came to lift his name on high? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I came to lift his name on high. Look at your other neighbor because they still looking at me, baby man. But look at your other neighbor. Say, other neighbor, I don't know about you, but I came to lift his name on high. Now, that wasn't good enough. Now, touch yourself and say, self. When I begin to think on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I got to lift his name. I got to give him glory. I got to give him honor. Shout glory. Now pat your hands together. That's giving yourself a high five. Is there anybody in the house that can look over your life and say, I got a reason to lift his name on high. I should have been dead. I should have lost my mind. But after all I've been through, I still have my joy. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for our young people. Reggie, put some more to Oregon in the monitors, please. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our young people. More of the Oregon. Amen. In the monitors. We thank God for them and the gift that they share with us on this second Sunday. Sister Brianna. To all of the parents who bring their children. Give God a hand clap of praise for them. We honor them. And it's always good to have space for young people to share. Amen. This is foundational for them. Amen. And I just watch them and my heart bubbles over because I watch how they were really excited. Amen. About singing. How they lift the name of God on high. Amen. Give yourself a hand, young people. All of them. Amen. And we thank God for them and everybody that works with them to share in this opportunity for them to express their self in worship to all of our visitors who are sharing here on today. We're glad to see your face in the place because of your face being here in your presence. Our worship experience is that much more enjoyable. Let's thank God for all of our visitors. Wave your hand, visitors, if you're here. Amen. So glad to see some of our returning visitors coming, sharing with us on today. Amen. There is a word I want to share with us as we are in this resurrection season. I want to look at a passage that I would probably share Matthew's gospel chapter 26 amen you know it'll be up there on the screen if you don't have your own personal copy of God's executive order from the I'll be reading from the New King James Version, but it's slightly different. Chapter 26. I generally don't read too many verses, but I'll read starting at verse 36 to 44 so you can get the full caption of what's going on. Y'all don't mind standing, do you? Amen. Amen. <laughs> It said, then Jesus came with him to a place called Gethsemane, said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Sit here while I go pray over there. He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me? One hour, 
Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, second time, he went away and prayed saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. He came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Let me just read verse 45 and 46. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Amen. I want to share from this thought today the grief of God's will. The grief of God's will will we're here and we are sharing in fellowship on today and the truth be told is that even though we're in this resurrection season where we're reminded of what God did for us through Jesus Christ some have called this passion week amen or Palm Sunday, where we see the young people with palm branches. And if you read the scripture, even before this text, just read the entire chapter 26, you'll see there are individuals, those Jews who held palm branches and laid them down as the triumphal infantry into Jerusalem. They hailed him as king, crying, Hosanna! meaning praise the Lord because of who he is. But then some call this Passion Week, where this would be the week, the days where Jesus would go through all type of significant suffering in order to purchase our salvation. But as I begin to look at this particular idea of Passion Week or as Palm Sunday, I cannot help that he is being portrayed as a suffering savior. But I believe Passion Week and Palm Sunday, him being the, the king as he's being portrayed, I believe they complement each other be because they express a present experience about a future reality. Amen, somebody. Y'all stay with me. Amen. And all of us, watch this, we have to learn how to be present in order to get to our future reality. Amen. There are things in the present that we have to be confronted with, that we have to be faced with, and we have to learn how to move past the present predicament and move to our future reality. But when I begin to think about this idea of grief, before I get to the text, I I, I, I'm sure that there are individuals under the sound of my voice. They have honed in on this word grief because a lot of us deal with grief. Amen, somebody. A lot of us sitting here today are still suffering from some significant emotional event that we had to go through. Preach turn. Be because, see, grief can be defined, if you will, by one way as a keen mental suffering or distress being afflicted over something that was lost. Amen, somebody. Something that was lost, that changed, amen, that altered life as we knew it, the death of somebody. See, grief doesn't have to just do with death. 
but it have to do with loss in your job, maybe some different experience that you have. And some of us, the truth of the matter is you're grief streak. Amen, somebody. Because our life has been altered simply because things are not the way they used to be. Amen. So this idea of grief, I, I had to draw on some principles that we find in psychology. There was a lady by the name of Elizabeth Kluber Ross who positioned and gave different principles about grief. The five stages of grief. Five stages of grief, not in any particular order. Y'all stay with me. Y'all don't mind. There's denial. There's anger. There's bargaining. There's depression. Then there's acceptance. Denial, meaning that you act like the person is still here. You act like the situation is still like it's supposed to be. Amen, somebody. You're carrying on as if nothing has happened. Amen. Sometimes even you don't believe that the person that died isn't coming back. So what happens is it's, it's common, y'all stay with me, to feel their presence. Watch this. It's common to feel their presence, to hear their voice, or even see them. Amen. Maybe in a dream. It's something that's coming. But denial, then, no particular order. Y'all don't y'all understand this. And then there's sometimes there's anger. Amen. Anger, which is a, a natural emotion that all of us feel. Because you all deaf can be cruel. Y'all stay with me. Amen. Death seemingly is cruel and unfair. Especially if someone dies that you believe it was before their time. Especially if you got fired from a job. Knowing that you didn't do nothing to deserve to be fired. Amen. Demoted or whatever it may be. Lost in your life. There's anger. Sometimes it's common even in death to feel anger toward the person that died. Because you left me too quick. I remember one of my relatives, my uncle died and seemingly my auntie was mad that she had been married to my uncle for so long. Why did you have to die and go away? I wish somebody had understood and leave me. Or sometimes there's anger with ourselves because there are things that we didn't do. Amen. Somebody, things that we should have done. That we did not do. Sometimes there is anger. Then there is bargaining. One is in pain. It's difficult to accept. There's nothing I can do about it. Y'all rolling with me. Amen. There's nothing that I could do about this. And then we start making deals with ourselves. Or even trying to make a deal with God saying, if I do this, maybe that will take the pain away. We start bargaining, going over things in the past. Watch this. Then asking ourselves a whole lot of questions and wishing we can go back and change what has already happened. We start bargaining. Then sometimes there is depression. We can talk about this more at Bible study. Depression, sometimes when we think about grief, we think about sadness and a longing, amen, for something or someone. And the pain can be so intense and, and so difficult because grief comes in waves. Amen, somebody. It comes in ways many over months and over years. You don't know when grief is going to hit you. Amen, somebody. So therefore, life can feel like it no longer holds any meaning or value. Then you become depressed because the person or the thing that you think you needed is no longer around. But then there is acceptance. 
acceptance, you all. Because I just stated, grief comes in many different ways. Nothing may ever seem right again. I tell people that, yes, my mother, different people that leave you, but seemingly, especially my mother, I will forever have a hole in my soul. Nothing you can do to fill that hole. Seems like things would never be right again, but, but after a time, after a while, amen, somebody, the pain, some of the pain begins to ease, and you accept the fact, amen, somebody. There is nothing that I could do about it. There is, except the fact we may never get over the death of a person that's been precious to us. But we learn how to live again. Amen, somebody. We learn how to function in life, even if that person is not with us. That's why y'all hear me talking about my mama and big mama and granddaddy and them, because I still believe in my heart. They may be physically gone, but the reason I can live is because their words, their values, their morals that they poured onto me live inside of me. So you learn how to accept it. Guess what? Grief doesn't necessarily happen in this order. Grief doesn't necessarily go in this particular order because I had to learn early on. Watch this. There are times I didn't bargain. I, 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 I didn't, wasn't angry at nobody. I had to learn how to accept death. Amen. Somebody I learned how to accept it because the Bible says that in, in the third chapter, verse number one of Ecclesiastes, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die. I'm going to miss them. Yes. But we all got to go that way. Learn how to accept it. And there are some things even before death happens physically. There are some things in life you're just going to learn how to accept. Amen. In life, I learned two things that are very important. You have to learn how to accept some things. And then you have to learn how to make the adjustments. And there are some people in life right now you haven't accepted, but then there are some people that accept it, but you have not made the necessary adjustments. Amen. So then when I begin, Tony, to look at this particular passage of Scripture, I understood that there's sometime grief associated with God's will. Y'all stay with me. I'm almost done. See, God's will is his prescribed directives for his people. Y'all don't mind me teaching a little bit, do y'all? His will is understood, y'all stay with me through here, by his word. We understand his will by understanding his word either explicitly or implicitly. We had a case like that in Sunday school today. Either we understand the intended meaning or we understand the principles that are associated with his word, which help us to understand his will. But I learned something that's very vital that people have a misunderstanding of God's will. Because probably is it not your fault. You've been listening to people who didn't understand. And so because they didn't understand, then you've been misguided about God's will for your life. I wish somebody understood what I'm saying. Y'all come on to Bible study. We could talk about it more in depth. Amen. Because there are some people in the house that told you to pray about it and everything going to be all right. But I wish I had some real people in the house. There were times that I prayed in everything. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Come here, Paul. Y'all remember Paul? In the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, he said, I had a thorn in my flesh. He said, and I prayed three times. He said, and I asked the Lord to move it. But he said, I'm not going to move it. He said, but I got another prescription for you. He said, but my grace is sufficient and is there anybody in the house that know that the pain didn't leave the problem didn't leave but you're glad about the grace because grace sustained me grace kept me when i wanted to give up grace kept me when i wanted to throw in the towel my grace is enough there's something amazing about his grace amen 
So therefore, we will explore in this passage how Jesus, the Son of Man, watch this, was confronted with some of the stages of grief. I'm going to show y'all. Not all of them, but he was confronted with some of the stages of grief even before he died because of his prescription for life. Look at the text if you don't mind, if you kept your Bible open. The Bible said it first tells us right there in verse 36. It said he came to a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane was his prayer ground. Amen, somebody. Gethsemane was his private place of prayer. And through this life, I'm going to tell you all something very, very, very important. That all of us need a prayer life. All of us need a private place to pray. I don't know, it may be in your car when you get out the house with that old cantankerous spouse. Y'all missing what I'm saying. I don't know where your prayer ground is, but you need to find a private place to seek God, amen, for some direction. Not to ask him for a car, not to ask him for a husband. Not to ask him for a better job, but you need to say, Lord, I need more of your presence in my life. I need your word in my life because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I'm not going to go into all what Gethsemane means. Some of you know it was the place where the olive grove was. And the olive, in order for an olive to be really used, it had to be crushed. It had to be pressed because olive oil was a very precious commodity. And there's somebody in the house wondering why you're being pressed, why you're being seemingly squashed by some of the pressures in life because the Lord is trying to get the oil out of you. Amen. There's something special in you that he's trying to get out of you, but you've been fighting against the pressures that's been coming in your life. Preach turn. Amen. Somebody. I ain't going to go through that right now. But Jesus teaches us right here how to deal with grief. If you understand, we'll talk about it more in Bible study. We got a lot to talk about, don't we? So therefore, y'all need to come. Amen. You go and read the verses before you'll see that this is around Passover time. Passover is the feast, a festival that the Jews celebrated because they remembered when the deaf angel passed over when they were in Egypt. Y'all remember that, amen, somebody. Amen, and so therefore it's very significant. I hope y'all come so we can talk about it because I got to get to the text. Y'all uh, getting tired of me now. But look at what the text says. He was there in Gethsemane. His private place of prayer. But it was also a place where he understood that he was going to be pressed. Lord, have mercy. The Bible says he said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Amen, somebody. You have to understand that there is some grief associated with God's will. I know you've been lied to, manipulated, telling you that when you're a believer that everything is going to be all right. You're not going to have to go through nothing. You shouldn't be sick. You have, shouldn't have to go through this. But I'm just reminded of it also. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. I don't care. You can set up shop in the church. You can build a tent up here around the altar every week. You're still going to have to go through some problems pressures and pains in your life. Jesus teaches us, Minister Sean, right here, he asks his disciples, because if you're going to learn how to deal with grief, the first thing I see as the text, you need a support system. Amen, somebody. You need to have a support system. He told three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. Now, this is significant. Everybody can't be your support system. You can't take everybody with you, amen. Because sometimes even the people that you take, they still won't understand. So you really can't take everybody with you, amen. But this is significant. This was his inner circle of disciples. This was his intimate group. See, you need some people in your life that you can be vulnerable with. 
that you can tell some stuff to that they're not going to run around town. Amen. Because all of us have some hiccup. All of us have some issues. And I need some time to tell somebody not to validate me, but just so I can be vulnerable with because I'm messed up. And sometimes I need to get it out. I need somebody to talk to. But I don't need to hear my business all over the street. Amen. Somebody, I don't need you telling me the biggest gossip in town. Amen. That's because somebody told you. You need to have a support system. Now, guess what? The same people, y'all stay with me. These were the same ones that he took on the mountain of transfiguration. Y'all remember, amen. Some of y'all understand, amen. The same ones when he was being shown in his deity. Y'all remember he said, uh, uh, come here, Peter, James, and John. Y'all go up with me on this mountain. He said, I, I saw Moses. I saw Elijah. Amen. Peter said, you ought to go into the construction business. You ought to build a tabernacle here. He said, no, because they saw him in his glory. Amen. Before he died, Peter said it was so good, he had to holler out, it's good for us to be here. And there are some people, it's just good to be in their company. Amen. But but the same people that saw him in his glory. Watch this. It's the same people that saw him in his grief. Amen. You need people that can see you in your glory as well as your grief. When you're up and when you are. Y'all preaching with me. Amen. Got to ask your question. Who is your support system? Some of y'all have a support system that ain't no support at all. You actually did support for your support system. They supposed to be the support. I wish I had somebody in the house. He became, watch this, so anguished and distressed. Y'all was looking at me. Listen to me. His soul was crushed with grief to the point of death. And all he asked them, Deacon McGee, y'all stay here and pray with me. I'm not asking y'all to go pray with me. Y'all intercede. I'm going over there, and y'all stay right here. I, I don't need you to see all of it, amen. But I'm going over, and I just want y'all to be a support. There's somebody that knows there's something about prayer. When you're in the hospital, amen, you're going through just to know that you got a good support system. Just to know that you got somebody saying something to God on your behalf. Y'all don't understand. That's why I like that old song. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. They took the time to pray for me. He had a good support system. But, but when he saw, he said, wait a minute. I just asked y'all to pray. And maybe that's what's wrong with the church. Too many of us are asleep. Amen. Sleep. That's why maybe our houses are like they are. We're asleep. Amen. Sleep. Amen. Can be looked at as a phase or an idea of death. Because none of us, when we laid down last night, amen, we didn't know we were in the world. All we did was close our eyes. And when we opened our eyes, we woke up to a brand new. None of us knew we were in the world last night. But that's what's wrong. Too many of us are asleep. Dead in our minds. Dead in our spirits. Dead. Not sensitive to anything. But he had a support system. He said, I just asked you, watch this, to pray with me one hour. But after you have the right support system. Even when they are asleep, even when you have grief, watch this. You have to determine your direction. Amen, somebody. Because what you have to go through, other people don't really understand it. That's why they got sleepy. Because they didn't accurately or, un un or adequately understand what he was going through. I know we like to get on the phone, Tony, and tell people about our life. But they can listen to you. But they don't really understand the pain you got to go through. I know they said I'm with you, but they don't really understand the tears that you are crying. They're just ready for you to say what you say sometimes and then get off the phone. They'll say, I don't know why they're telling me. 
sleep. Amen, somebody. That's why you have to determine your direction. What are you going to do? Even when your support system is asleep. Amen, somebody. The Bible says, watch this. He determined his direction by doing what? It says right there, he went a little further. And in life, all you got to do is take one step at a time. Even if you're suffering with the loss of somebody, you just got to go one step, one moment, one minute, one day at a time. You have to make it up in your mind that you are going to go a little further. The reality of it is some of us have decided that we're going to die right where we are. We're not going to go any further because we forgot that they died. I'm still alive. I know you're going to miss them, but you got to go a little bit further. You have to determine your direction. And some of us are drying up. Amen, somebody. Some of us have been crystallized in the place that we are. But you got to make it up in your mind that I'm going to go a little bit for it was Jesus, the son of man. This is him in his flesh. I know y'all talking about this is God. Yes, he's 100 percent God and 100 percent man. This is him in his flesh. I wish somebody understood. He went a little further. And what did he do? He didn't just go a little further, but he prayed again. Amen, somebody. He did not panic, but he prayed. And how many of us panic instead of praying? There's an old song that said, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. I'm not going to panic. I know it looks bad. I know it looks bleak. And he said this. Watch this. This is one of the stages. I told y'all he's trying to bargain. He said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. He said, Lord, I don't want to go through this. He said, let this cup. None of us don't want to go through certain things. He's bargaining with God, but it's a comma there. And that's why you got to pause in the text. It says, and he said, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to go through this. But then he says, after the comma, it's a pause. Not my will. But thy will be done. Nevertheless, there's something I want. But watch this. Here's the other one. I accept your will. Somebody missing what I'm saying. I accept. Yes, I'm in grief right now. Yes, I'll try to bargain with you. But I got to accept your will. Because your will is what's best for me. Because I don't own nothing. I don't own nobody. Amen. Yes, I messed with my daughter when she was a little younger. She would, we would be riding in the car, and I would grab her hand, and then she would kind of try to pull back. I said, give me my hand. back." I made this hand. Amen. This is my hand. Amen. But I know that I didn't make the hand. Because the Bible teaches me there's only one creator. Amen. There's only one person that made. Amen. So I ain't made nothing. And I got to learn how to accept his will. I got to learn how to accept what happens. You have to learn how to accept yourself, what you did or didn't do, because you can't go back and change the situation. So there's no point in beating yourself up about something you could not do. You cannot do. You are self-inflicting. Amen. Somebody ain't nobody else doing it. You doing it to yourself. Because you're beating yourself up. Every day you wake up. That's why some of us wake up so tired. You've been wrestling all night long. All day long. Because you beat yourself up. You're in a wrestling match with yourself. Because you can't go back and change. I wish I had. I know why y'all not saying amen. He said, Father. My Father. Withdraw your will. I don't want to go this way you chose her you chose him <laughs> amen somebody you chose it now you don't want it oh, I wish somebody understood it was looking good feeling good at first 
You chose that direction. What way are you going to choose? And is there anybody in the house tired of going your own way? That's why the Bible said there's a way that seemed right. Yes, I messed up. I made some mistakes. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm preaching about myself. Y'all just listening in on my conversation. But is there anybody in the house that can vibe with me to say, I've done some stuff. I've messed up. I've connected with people. I've gone my own way just to find myself at a dead end. But I'm learning now. That there's a better way, amen. I don't have to keep going that same old way. I don't have to keep beating myself up. I'm going to determine my direction. And I'm going to move a little bit further, amen. Step by step. I don't want to go this way. But the thing I loved about Jesus, he dismissed his desire. Amen. And he delighted in his divine direction. And is there anybody in the house that has to learn? You may be still learning to dismiss your desire, but you're learning how to delight in God's divine direction. Sometimes I didn't know which way I was going to go. Sometimes I didn't know how I was going to make it. But I thank God that I walk by faith. And not by sight. Uh, that I went a little bit further. Because I determined my direction. Because I realized that God's will was best for my life. Uh, and when you determine uh, your direction. Uh, you have uh, the proper perspective uh, about your purpose. Uh, see I didn't understand stuff I was going through uh, in the past. Uh, but is there anybody that can look back uh, in, from where you are right now. Uh, and you start thinking about it. I had to go through this. Because uh, I can learn how to trust God. Uh, I had to go through that. Uh, it teach me how to love. Uh, I had to go through that it taught me more patience and now I'm stronger and now I'm wiser and now I'm better I have the proper perspective about my purpose amen somebody he went back again I'm through y'all his support system they will sleep again he said you could not watch with me but one hour I know I know I know the spirit is willing but the flesh gets weak sometime and is there anybody in the house that knows that you have to learn how to accept God's will because prayer puts things in the proper perspective look at your neighbor say neighbor I don't know about you but I've learned I've learned that prayer puts things in the proper perspective and I love it right here see you have to learn how to win in the garden before you get on the field. Say yes. What do you mean, Turner? The reason Jesus was successful going through what he went through. He won the battle in his prayer ground. You have to learn how to win your battle in your prayer round. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. I I have to learn uh, how to win uh, in private uh, before I go public. Uh, and is there anybody in the house uh, that learned how to win uh, in private? Uh, and now I'm on display. Uh, now I can be presented. Uh, when you look at me, uh, you're looking uh, at a miracle. Uh, the only thing I'm trying to say uh, is when you're looking at me, uh, you're looking uh, at a testimony. Uh, so you don't don't know like I know all the hell all the sleepless nights you don't know what I had to go through to get to where I am right now people lied on me people talked about me scandalized my name I did messed up stuff to myself I'm so glad that now all I've been through oh, I still have Joy, yeah, say yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I don't know about you, but I will not die where I am. But I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Say yeah, say yes. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna. 
quit each and every day. I'm going a little bit further. Thank God, all right. Look at your name. Say, neighbor, don't quit. Don't stop. You got to be like that little Indian. That good. He woke up every day. And guess what he said? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And is there anybody in the house that know you can? Yeah, yeah. I don't have to think. Because I know if God be for me, who can be against me? Ain't God all right? Yeah, yeah. Snows may rise, the winds may blow, but I'm going with Jesus all the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ain't he all right? I'm done, y'all. I'm trying to quit, but look at your neighbor. One more time, I know y'all tired. They don't want to talk to you. That's all right, don't talk to them. They sitting there, but is there anybody know that you are blessed? So talk to yourself. Say self that I'm glad that it's not over yet. I'm glad that the story is not over. I'm not at the end, but there's more in store for me. There's more peace. More love, more joy. can give God glory to say I did not accept it uh, but I accept it uh, that I'm better than that uh, and can you give uh, God the best praise uh, to look at the devil in the face uh, the same man and a man you thought you had me uh, but I got away uh, ain't he all right uh, oh yeah uh, oh yeah oh
Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Depression, anxiety, has tried to live at our house. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we cancel every assignment of the enemy. Spirit of depression, mental illness right now in the name of Jesus. Every assignment that comes up against these, your people. These young people, oh God, thank you for them right now. We ask that their mind stays covered by your word, oh God. That we inject them with your word, oh God. The hope that can only come from you. Touch right now everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you right now that yes, we have lost significant people. Lost significant things. We're not where we used to be. Our life has changed. It has been altered, oh God. But we will not be subject to depression. We will not be subject to bargaining. We will not be subject to anger right now. Father, we thank you for healing in our minds and in our soul. Thank you, oh God, for a word that teaches us how to deal with grief. How Jesus dealt with grief. He went a little further, oh God. He prayed. He accepted his way, his will, oh God. And thank you right now, God. We know the end of the story. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Who for the joy despised the cross, endured the shame, oh God. But he's now in glory. Thank you, oh God, for our testimony as well. Father, we can look back over our life and see where we were, see what we've been through, see how we made it through. Some of us are trying to make it through, but we serve as an encouragement to those who are trying to make it, oh God, that if you keep going a little further, as Big Mama and them said, if you keep your hand in the Lord's hand, you walk with him. He'll walk with you. Amen. And he'll give you the strength, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your presence. Yes, we miss the presence of loved ones. But thank you for your presence. Because in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. We ask now that you touch right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice who's battling right now. They're in their garden of Gethsemane. They're being pressed. They're being crushed. Thank you for what you put in us. Thank you for what's going to come out of us. It's a precious commodity, oh God, that we may bless somebody else. Moved by your power and by your spirit. There may be someone under the sound of my voice who has not accepted you in their life. We pray as we extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. They'll want to know you, to be associated with you, to be a part of this family of faith where they can grow to their full potential in you. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for those who have joined us by way of Facebook or YouTube. Thank you for your virtual presence with us on this morning. We pray that something was said to encourage you, to motivate you to be a better you. You don't have to die in the desert. There is a promised land waiting for you. All you have to do is keep on going a little further. One step at a time. One day at a time. Have the right support system. Determine your direction. And then you will have the proper perspective about your fault, your future. Amen. And if you want to come to this church, we got a lot to talk about in Bible study. Come on, meet us at Bible study at 11 o'clock on Tuesday at 630 on Wednesday evening. Your presence would be very, very welcome with our presence. We thank you for those who send your financial contribution, your gifts to this church. You bless us as we bless you. And remember, don't make the difference in the day. Don't let the day make the difference in you. But you make the difference in the day. We want to also remind our church family, one of our beloved members, Sister Marion McLean, has gone from labor to reward. And we want to let that family know that we are praying for you. She was a very vital part, special member of this body of believers. And we want you to know that we are praying for you to all of our sick and shut in that are out there. We want you to know that are watching, that we love you, and we definitely have you on our mind and in our heart. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Let's put our hands together.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our NRNBC News. I do not have a lot of breaking news for you this week. However, just a couple of reminders from our youth department because it is our youth week. Youth choir rehearsal will be April 16th at 12.30 p.m. There will also be praise team rehearsal April 16th. For information regarding the time, please see Sister Bree or Sister Tiffany Warren. Also, the monthly newsletter for the youth department is now available, located in the vestibule. And there will be a small presentation after our breaking news today from our youth department. Here are the weekly announcements. The Deborah Circle will be meeting Monday, 9.30 a.m. And the soup kitchen will be open at 11.45 a.m. Please call the church between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock noon for a delicious hot bowl of soup. Deliveries are limited, so please keep that in mind. Anyone interested in joining the NRNBC Deborah Circle, please come out Monday. We would love to have you sign up. The Deborah Circle and Soup Kitchen Ministry is under the direction of the general mission of NRNBC, President Geraldine Burton Wilson, Leader Sister Horton Springfield, and Assistant Leader Sister Cheryl Taylor. If interested, please see a member of the Deborah Circle. If all members of the Deborah Circle can please stand, so if anyone is interested, they will know who to contact. Thank you. Also following immediately after service today, the Dorcas and Progressive Circle will be meeting and there will be a announcement from the health ministry team. Please see Sister Antoinette. There will be a trustee meeting on Monday, April 11th at 6.30 p.m here at the church and all trustee members are expected to be in attendance again all trustee members are expected to be in attendance weekly bible study are as follows tuesday 11 o'clock a.m wednesday 6 30 p.m sunday bible institute at 9 30 a.m and whether you watch us in person or virtually our worship service begins here at 10 50 a.m Please remember to keep our youth in prayer, those who are sick and shut in, those who are in prison, our pastor, our church, and our country. And as our wonderful pastor would say, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time. Bye-bye.